This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora, and welcome to Tuesday's Economy Watch, where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston, and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz, and today we leave with news both China and Japan are making background moves to raise the value of their currencies after long, weak periods. But first, American inflation expectations for the year ahead were little changed at 3.6% in August from 3.5% in July, but it was the first increase in five months. Expectations for rents rose to 3.1%, the highest since July 2022. Also, price pressures were seen for petrol, food, medical care and education, but these were also all very minor. Three-year-ahead inflation expectations in the US slipped slightly to 2.8%. Across the Pacific, Japanese machine tool orders inched ahead in August from July, an improvement. Orders from local customers fell less and export orders rose, but they still haven't gotten back to year-on-year gains yet. Meanwhile, Japanese bond yields rose to their highest since 2014, as remarks by the head of their central bank suggest they want to push back against the very low value of the yen. China's central bank moved to raise the value of the yuan on Friday and held its higher fixing yesterday. New vehicle sales in China in August were strong at almost 2.6 million in the month, and this level is near the highest for the month over the past 10 years. And what is somewhat unusual is that these peaks are occurring in August. Usually the peak of the year for them is in November. The NEV segment is now dominating. Their total fleet has made a big enough shift that air quality in major cities is improving noticeably. And staying in China, there was a bounce back in new lending in August after the unusually low levels in July. New yuan loans rose nearly $1.4 billion, which was actually slightly more than the bounce back expected of $1.2 billion. From the perspective of the past five years, however, the August increase was modest, only high because July was so low. More major Chinese cities are removing all restrictions on home purchases and resales to revive their sluggish housing markets. In Europe, the EU said their economy is likely to grow by 0.8% in 2023, which is lower than the previously projected 1.1% expansion. It has been held back by persistent inflation, which is hurting consumption and bringing tight monetary policy restraints to economic activity. Locally, all eyes will be on the pre-election economic and fiscal update and the updated bond issuance required. We will have full coverage from about 1pm this afternoon. The US Treasury 10-year yield starts today up two basis points at 4.28%, and the price of gold will start today at just on $1,921 an ounce. That's up $2 from yesterday. And oil prices are little changed from yesterday at just over 86.50 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is just over $90 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today almost a half a cent firmer from this time yesterday at 59.2 US cents. But against the Aussie, we're a quarter cent lower at 92 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're a little changed to 55.1 Euro cents. However, that all means our trade weighted index is actually unchanged, still at 68.5. And the Bitcoin price is lower again from this time yesterday, now at $25,157, a net fall of 2.1% overnight. Volatility over the past 24 hours has been moderate, just on plus or minus 2%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow. Tomorrow.